Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with a book haul. Uh, I have recently picked up some used books. I got a few books new uh, and I had a few books sent to me as Christmas and birthday gifts, which was really, really sweet. Uh, so I thought that I would do a book haul. I didn't intend to do a book haul uh, anymore in the year of 2021, but... I think it's kind of appropriate. I think I have a bit of a mixed bag here. I have classics, uh, I have fantasy, I have uh, actually, weirdly enough, some kind of literary fiction. Uh, so let's just get right into this. Actually, before we get right into this, this is a new dress that I'm wearing and I'm obsessed with it. My mom always says that I dress like I'm Sissy Spacek and I take that as a compliment. I love Sissy Spacek style, but uh, I'm just loving this. This feels very wintry, but it also feels very summery. Uh, so I'm just very happy right now in my new dress with all of my new books. First up, we have A History of Korea, which Christy Lewis from Dostoyevsky in Space sent me for my birthday and Christmas. I'm still technically currently reading this. I think we both have somewhat struggled with this because I actually sent her this book for Christmas too. So great minds think alike. But I think we both had our issues with this, though we both felt as though we are learning quite a bit. Uh, so this is a really interesting one, but I don't know enough about Korean history to say whether or not it is a book that I recommend yet. Another book that I recently picked up is The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Wallwork. This is a Nutcracker retelling, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm not all that enthused with it. Uh, I am currently reading this one, and this is on the younger side of YA, I would say, which is not a bad thing. It's just something that I prefer to know when I go into a book. Uh, so this one is just really not a book for me. Uh, so I don't know whether or not I'm gonna finish it actually. Speaking of books that I am currently reading, I am currently reading Gilded by Marissa Meyer. That's why I only have the dust jacket up here. This is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling and I really love the fairy tale of Rumpelstiltskin. I feel like I say that about every fairy tale, that I just really love a fairy tale retelling. And in truth, there's probably only a handful of fairy tales out there that I am not interested in seeing a retelling of or that I am just truly not interested in. Uh, and Rumpelstiltskin is one that I am really interested in seeing how different authors tackle. I think Rumpelstiltskin can be done in many, many different ways. It is hard though to read this because uh, the Rumpelstiltskin character has just kind of come into it where I am about 100 pages in and it's hard to visualize anybody but Robert Carlyle from Once Upon a Time. And in this book, of course, he's young and he's handsome, you know, of course. But in my mind, I just see Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time. So that one's, that's tough to break your brain of. Once Upon a Time was such a great show. I really missed that one. Let me know down below if you watched that and if you also kind of had a massive crush on Rumpelstiltskin. I'll admit it, I did. Next up are three books that Svea sent me. I will link to Svea's channel down below. Uh, and Svea sent me The Flight of the Falcon by Daphne du Maurier. She and I share a love of Daphne du Maurier, and this is one that I had heard nothing about until she sent it to me. And it is set in Rome and is about a tour guide in Rome who is circumstantially involved in the death of a peasant, which sounds really, really exciting. I love Daphne du Maurier, and I'm excited to get into more of her titles that I haven't heard very much about. Uh, so this is one that I would really like to pick up soon. I love to read books that are set in Rome or Italy in the wintertime. There's something about them that just feels very sunshiny and warm. She also sent me the Anglo-Saxon World, an anthology that was put together by Kevin Crossley Holland for Oxford. This is really exciting because it puts together quite a bit of different writings from the Anglo-Saxon time period. So poetry, laws, I believe, um, some other prose writing. I believe Alfred the Great's Will is in here. Parts of Beowulf are in here. So this is going to be a really valuable addition to my collection, I believe, and I just can't wait to start reading it. I definitely want to do a full review of this when I complete it, but I think it's going to be one that I read pretty piecemeal. Last but not least, she sent me The Girl Who Kept Winter by Zhao Xi, which is a Vietnamese fantasy book and I'm 
kind of confused now that I have it in my hands because it kind of feels as though it is a self-published book and there isn't really a description of the book on the back but this is apparently very fairy tale like and also very romantic and I just am pumped about it. I think it sounds really really great and the cover is gorgeous because there he is and there she is and so you can kind of turn it upside down it's just gorgeous. I just think it's a really beautiful cover, and I think this sounds like a lot of fun. This sounds like the type of fantasy that I really enjoy. The other day I went to Barnes & Noble because at my birthday a couple of weeks ago, I went into Barnes & Noble with the intent to buy this particular book. They did not have it. A bookseller searched high and low all over the store. She couldn't find one in the store, she couldn't find one in the back, and she actually couldn't find one online. So she kind of signed me up for like an online pickup order where they would let me know when they had the book back in stock. And so they did finally the other day uh, and I went into the store to pick up this book and I found another. So the book that I found that I'm really excited about is The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a Chinese classic that I have heard nothing but good things about. I know a book is coming out next year that is a retelling of this. I'm just really excited about it because uh, the author who I follow on Twitter has talked a bit about it as being like a tragedy, which I'm kind of compelled by. Uh, so this is unfortunately an abridgment. I'm not sure if the original is just really, really long, but I think I'm going to give it a try. And if I really enjoy this, then maybe I can find an unabridged version. But I don't think I have ever in my life read a Chinese classic, so I think this is gonna be really exciting. But the book that I really wanted, the purpose of me going to Barnes & Noble was to pick up Iron Widow, which has been making the rounds for a very, very long time. And everyone has been ranting and raving about this. This is a sci-fi novel. I know, I'm really stepping out here. But I'm kind of in the mood to read sci-fi. I've been a bit in the mood to watch things about space um, and to read sci-fi. So I'm really excited about this, but I'm also really excited because this is apparently a retelling of China's only female emperor. And it's talked about as being quite a bit like Pacific Rim. So I think two people are piloting something akin to uh, Pacific Rim where they kind of mind meld with each other. So I'm really excited about that. I think this is also supposed to be a really feminist book. I think it features a polyamorous relationship, which I'm really excited to see. I'm just pumped about this. <laughs> I really hope that I like it because I've heard a lot of hype. I follow the author on YouTube and I think their videos are so fascinating. Their videos talk quite a bit about uh, Chinese culture and media and their video on Mulan that came out last year, Disney's live action Mulan was particularly fascinating and I'll link to that down below if you would like to watch it. Tori from Hufflepuff Discovery, whose channel I will link to down below, sent me for Christmas, The Bookseller of Florence by Ross King. I am pumped about this. I've actually never read a Ross King. A lot of people have asked me when they learn that I'm into the Italian Renaissance um, and that I've read quite a bit of nonfiction about it. A lot of people ask if I recommend him uh, and it feels as though I have a bit of a blind spot because I have never read him before. So I would really like to try him soon and I think this will be the best one. I think this is gonna be the one that compels me the most because this is about the importance of literature in starting the Italian Renaissance and fostering the correct environment for the Renaissance to occur, basically. Uh, and so the importance of books and literature in that, which I think is really fascinating, I think is one of the most interesting parts of the Italian Renaissance. I am really, really excited about this. So thank you again, Tori. Another YA book that I am deciding to give a try to is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've heard nothing but good things about this this year, especially when the second book came out. But this is kind of a YA thriller that I think has to do with a game aspect, which I love. I always love when there's kind of a game in books. I was really sold on this when Chandler Ainsley, who was a booktuber who actually did not enjoy this book, but when she said the four main boys are basically the same characters from The Raven Cycle, they're all equivalent to A Boy from The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater, I said, well, now I have to pick it up because that really completely sold me on it. But I think it's also a bit like Knives Out, a girl inherits money from a guy she really basically knows nothing about 
and the family is angry that she is getting their inheritance. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Melissa from Libraries and Labradors, whose channel I will also link down below, uh, she sent me for Christmas the Lusiads, which is a Portuguese epic poem about Vasco da Gama and sailing around the world, sailing around the tip of Africa. Does that not sound amazing? I don't know why. I haven't heard about this before. Why this past year is the first time I heard about it when a couple of Portuguese subscribers of mine told me about this and told me I would love it. I'm really excited about this. I think this sounds amazing because this was a time period that was really, really fascinating to me as a kid. I was particularly compelled by Spanish conquistadors as a child and what they did when they moved into the New World specifically, but Vasco da Gama and other explorers like that kind of went hand in hand with it for me. I was particularly interested in colonialism and how colonizers interacted with native peoples. And so this is a time period that I used to know a lot about. I'm pretty sure I don't know near enough about it now, but I think the age of exploration is very, very interesting. And I think it will be wonderful to explore that through epic poetry. I also recently picked up The Plotters by Eun Soo Kim. This is a Korean thriller, I guess you would say. It's about assassins and I was really compelled by this. I think this was really, really beautifully written. I have a recent reading vlog where I picked this up and read it and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think there were parts of it that could have been done better, but for the most part, this is one that I really enjoyed. Hand in hand with that, I also picked up Battle Royale, which is a book that I have since DNF'd. Uh, I read these in the same reading blog where I was kind of reading books like Netflix's Squid Game. And this is just one that I wasn't in the mood for at the time, and I definitely plan on returning to it. This is kind of akin to Hunger Games and that it is a group of kids being forced to kill each other in a dystopian society. They're very, very different, but at a basic level, that's their similarity. So I found this to be a whole lot more brutal than the Hunger Games, and thus that's kind of why I decided to sit it down for the time being. I also picked up Demian by Herman Hesse, and so this is a classic that I decided to pick up because it influenced my favorite music video by BTS, which is Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and I am really excited to read this and get context for their music and context for that music video in particular. Uh, so this is one that I am really excited about. It is a more modern classic. Sometimes I struggle with that. I think this is gonna have to do quite a bit with philosophy, but I think it also has quite a bit to do with religion and good and bad. And so I'm really excited about this actually. Uh, so this is one that's actually not that big and I'm really looking forward to picking it up very, very soon. Kind of hand in hand with that, I also picked up The Unbearable Lightness of Being, which is a Czech classic, I believe. This is set in Prague, uh, and it is about a very interesting romantic relationship, I believe. This is one of RM, or Nam June's favorite books uh, from BTS, and I have quite a few books here in this book haul that I bought because he recommended them, and I'm really excited uh, to read the books that he recommended. And this is one that, I didn't think I was going to like, but when I found out more about it, uh, I decided that I really think this one will be up my alley. I think it is literary fiction, but I think it is one that is probably gonna be pretty compelling to me personally. And so if you've read this, I would love to know about it down below because I really like Czech literature. I went through a phase at one time where I read quite a bit of Czech literature. So I'm not sure if the author is Czech or if this is just set in Prague. I also picked up Kim Ji Young, Born 1982, also because RM from BTS recommended it and a lot of K-pop idols have recommended this over the years. I am really excited about this one. This is one that I had heard quite a bit about before finding out that a lot of K-pop idols recommended it. It's apparently a pretty big classic of feminist literature, especially in Korea. So I'm really interested in this and hopefully I enjoy it. I know it's one that some people love and some people hate. Another YA fantasy that I picked up, and I can't believe I picked this up. This is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. Victoria Aveyard is mostly known for her Red Queen series, which I'm going to admit was not my favorite. And there was a lot about the Red Queen series that should have worked for me, but it absolutely did not. 
I am going to give authors a second try in the new year. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. I'm not just going to turn my back on an author because I didn't like one thing they did. This sounds really good. This is apparently a multiple perspective fantasy and there are pirates in it. That was basically all I needed to know. There are also assassins in it. Again, kind of a buzzword for me with fantasy. So I'm excited about this. It's just massive. <laughs> it's such a big book. And I hope that I don't have the issues with this that I recall having with the Red Queen series. Connor of Connor Stompanato sent me for Christmas uh, The Library of Greek Mythology by Apollodorus. I will link to his channel down below as well. And this is one that I'm really excited about. This is apparently a big classic in terms of Greek mythology. It's much shorter than I would have thought kind of an anthology of Greek mythology would be, but that kind of makes me excited about it because it doesn't seem that intimidating now, and I can't wait to pick it up in the new year. Keely from A Bibliophile's Journey sent me a tip for The Hangman by Alison Epstein. I am pumped about this. This is historical fiction about Christopher Marlowe working as a spy for Queen Elizabeth. Do I need to say anything else? It just sounds great. I really like historical fiction set in the Elizabethan age, actually, but I am particularly compelled by Christopher Marlowe and kind of Elizabeth's spy ring. So this is one that has been on my list for a long time. I think she's gonna make this a series, which is really exciting. And I think he's going to solve a different mystery in every book. And I'm really, really, excited to read this. I'm in the mood for some historical fiction and I have a couple more historical fictions here in this haul that maybe I'll go into next, but I am really, really excited about this one and thank you again, Keely. Speaking of historical fiction, my two book of the month picks this month. I decided to get two historical fictions and one is The Postmistress of Paris by Meg Waite Clayton. I know, I've said it before and I've said it many, many times that I'm sick of World War II historical fiction. There's so much history out there that we could be talking about, that we could be writing in. Why, why do we keep going to Paris and World War II? And I do know why. It is a very compelling time period. But this one sounds really, really good because it is about a woman who is helping artists who are being hunted by the Nazis. She's helping them flee Nazi-occupied territory. And so there is apparently gonna be a big theme of art in this, which is one of the aspects of World War II that I do find most fascinating. I think World War II is very, very interesting. I just think it's overplayed in historical fiction. That's my only issue with it. But something that I think is very interesting about World War II is the Nazis' relationship with art uh, and art stealing and how people, how museums in particular, were forced to hide and preserve their art to prevent the Nazis from taking it and how so much art has disappeared. And even now, I remember a couple of weeks ago, something came up for auction. I said, what is a Botticelli doing up for auction that we know for a fact, we know for a fact where it was about 70 or 80 years ago. I think there should be some interrogation going on in the art community anyway. That is a discussion for another day. I feel very passionately about art auctions uh, and provenance of art. Uh, so that is a discussion for another day. I'm just really excited about this one. So as with everything else in this haul, this is one that I am looking forward to picking up very, very soon. My other historical fiction pick from Book of the Month this month was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And I just couldn't resist this cover. I know this has been going around for a very, very long time and I love the paperback cover. I really do. But isn't that just beautiful? The colors of it. And then look at the color of the book itself. It's just so pretty. It's a very, very light green. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but it's just gorgeous. I have been interested in Pachinko for a very, very long time, but the size of it has really, really daunted me for historical fiction. But I think a mini series is supposed to be coming out soon, maybe in the new year. And I would really like to read it before that happens. And this is one that I feel calling my name. This is one that I think I'm probably going to pick up in the next week or two. Michaela of Michaela Lee Reads sent me the Mary Shelley Club for Christmas and my birthday. And this is kind of a YA horror, a YA thriller that I know very little about. And I would like to keep it that way before I dive into it. I think it's going to be one that I really enjoy. This year I've really gotten into mysteries and thrillers and I'm very interested to see 
how YA is doing it. Uh, so this is one that I'm also just really pumped about. She also sent me this gorgeous edition of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. So this is one I'm just really excited to have on my shelf and to constantly have around as a reference. I really want to do an entire video about the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, and I feel like that's probably coming in the new year. Last but not least, she sent me Nightmare Abbey by Thomas Love Peacock, which is a romantic classic that I just can't wait to read. I'm really looking forward to it because apparently characters in here are based on Lord Byron and Percy Shelley. I'm there for it. I'm just really excited about it. It's also very, very short, which I have to appreciate. In the Romantic period, there were a lot of short novels, so I'm definitely saving this one for the new year, and I am really looking forward to it. Okay, we are in the final stretch. These last three also have to do with RM from BTS and books that he has recommended. And so I picked up Nature by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and this is the rest of his selected essays in this edition. Uh, nature is what RM has specifically recommended. He's someone who really loves nature and feels really passionately about conservation and everything. And so this is one that I'm tentatively excited about. I believe he's also recommended Walden by Henry David Thoreau. And that is just a classic that really intimidates me. And so I'm not ready for that. But an essay, I think I can handle. So if you have read this, please let me know your feelings on it down below. I have never read Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, and so he's kind of someone who really intimidates me. I also picked up Please Look After Mom, which has been recommended not just by RM, but by quite a few K-pop idols. This is apparently a really massive book in Korea. It's about a woman who goes missing one day and how essentially, I guess her family finds out just how much she was doing for them and how she was really holding the family together. So I do think it's a mystery novel, but I think it's also quite literary and talking about their relationship with her as their mother. This feels like a bit of a wild card to me. I think it can go one of two ways. I really feel like I'll either love this or hate it. I don't think I'm going to come down in the middle at all, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will just be run of the mill. We'll see. I can't wait to get started on my RM project. Last but not least is a giant tome that RM has recommended, and it is 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. And I have never read Murakami before in my life. I have always had the sense that I wouldn't like him. Uh, and 1Q84 is the one that I have been most compelled by in the past. So that's why I decided to go with it as my first one because it really did sound interesting to me. I think this is about a man and a woman kind of going into an alternate world, a different version of 1984. And I think this quite clearly is kind of going in conversation with George Orwell's 1984, which is one of my favorite books of all time and is also one of RM's favorite books. So I'm excited about this. There was a lot of Murakami on his list, but this is the one that really interests me the most. So hopefully I have made a good choice. If not, I won't give up. I will try another Murakami. I feel like I should really give him a chance. He's an author that is still currently working that a lot of people are already talking about as a classic author. So I really would like to see what all the hype is about. And I think, I think I'm gonna like this. Uh, if you have read this, please let me know how you feel about it down below. Let me know how you feel about all of these, if you've read any of them. So those are all the books that I have recently hauled. I would love to know down below if you've read any of them and what you have been hauling recently, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading, goodbye.